in a square of resistance. It's got such an interesting history. This is the first arrival of the first West Indian migration to Great Britain. This is where the slum landlord Rackman packed in these migrants to this country in terrible conditions. Songs are written about this square. Only in the 1970s, this was a square of very hippie alternative culture. Early hippie festivals here before Glastonbury. It's very beautiful to come and do a product here with that history. We engaged with the London Festival of Architecture because we wanted to do a bold, impactive modular building. So we had a little architectural competition with three or four architects, firms supplied, and this we like this because it's colourful, it's environmental, the milk crates go back to being milk crates, the water goes on the plants and the bottles are broken up. It was designed by an architect called Joe Hagen and built by an artist called uh, Mark Bailey for the Institute of Light. And what we've done is we've borrowed the milk crates from the, the UK's largest milk crate manufacturer and when the building's finished they're going to go back into their life of milk crates. So the building just disappears, there's no environmental footprint. Well, we've got 12,000 water bottles, they're dead stock. And what we're going to do when the building's finished is we're going to water the garden with them and we're going to crush the water bottles and then they're going to be made into pellets and reused again. With the colour of the building is that it, people can pick out their own flags from the colour. Like, you know, if you're a Rustam man, you've got red, gold and green. Or you've got the French flag there, or the tricolour, or you've got a bit of a German flag there. What? Brazil, You've got Brazil, you know what I mean? So it's a kind of feeling of itself like world colour. gives it its stability. We use straps that you see on the side of lorries, ratchet straps, and these tension, they're tensioned and bring all the crates together. And we've also got straps coming along this way, tight, and this becomes like a solid block. And what, what do you think that would be the strap that brings all these people together? Art, like well art, too. what brings people together and what we're very passionate about is people doing art and doing, which is, the, which is the collective process of actually making something and taking it away and learning a bit more about what you're doing.
an art house is a do-it-yourself art school. The idea is that we want to set up many temporary structure art schools in parts of Britain that don't have access to art and doing. So this is a pilot project. I very much wanted it to be a do-it-yourself art school and see if it could behave like an art school. So have classes, have tutors, have assistants. And so we looked out for volunteers and we and people just kind of came along and helped out, which was really nice. So the project began to be more organic as it, as it grew, and so people adopted it. Some of the classes we've got coming up this week are so extraordinary. We've got um, very severely disabled people coming, and the artist could make a, a mobile and the people would just make very small strokes of colour on paper and then their paper would be put into the mobile so hundreds of times and then because they're so disabled they're just going to spin it very gently and she's going to play very light music and put some fairy lights on it it's going to be amazing so what we're trying to do is create new workshops with different groups we've got the deaf group coming and they're going to do life drawing we've got um, people with cerebral palsy coming and they're going to work with an artist called Tom Dixon and they're going to make things out of soft shapes. Things. So we're trying to develop new ideas. So we've got these kind of fun days and then we're also doing some serious work as well. results have been fantastic. The collaboration between artists and groups has been amazing. We've really achieved and we've really, I think, proved that you can bring people who don't do art and doing into a space and make them creative. Creating legacy is very important for Art House. And what we really want to do is uh, for other towns and cities that don't have art schools or art galleries to adopt this model and do a month's art and doing in their locality so that it creates memory, it creates art. I'm really looking forward to the building disappearing. Um, I just like the idea it's just gone and needs no, leaves no footprint. And that it's just uh, temporary, that it's a pop-up, that it's elusive. And then we'll see, it'll be interesting to see what, how it lasts in the, in the square's memory in the years to come.